Okay, all right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you clicked on this video, you're probably very confused. Probably like, dude, what the hell is going on? Why are you bulking? You just said you were cutting. Um, you were gonna, you know, cut to 180. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, going into the start of that series, I was battling a little bit of diet fatigue is what we'll call it, I guess. Um, I've been cutting since like April. Um, if you follow me on my other platforms, you know like the transformation I made. I lost like 30 pounds in, from like April to like July, like June, July. Lost like 30 pounds. Once I made that transformation, um, I kind of got sucked into the, uh, you know, social media rabbit hole of staying shredded all year round and honestly trying to push the boundaries and go even further, um, which if I would have went even further, I would have been 50 pounds down, which is insane. But I kind of, um, I kind of bought into that and it sucks because, um, it does, you know, do well. The content does do well when you're shredded, but honestly, if you're natty and you're not meant to, if you're like, for me, I'm like naturally a thick guy. Like my body does not want to be under 10% body fat. My body really doesn't even want to be under like 12% body fat. Um, I'm a thick Italian unit, you know, naturally. So I was kind of pushing myself a little too far, a little too hard. My hormones were all fucked up, like super irritable all day, every day. Couldn't get shit done because of the brain fog. Like I couldn't do anything. Like I've been posting a lot of reposts on TikTok and, and all my other platforms because I literally could not focus on a single thing. And then I would just spend my days like the last month just on TikTok scrolling because I was just, I couldn't do it. Like I had no energy to do anything. And after I lifted, like lifting was a chore. And after I got my lift done, bro, like the tank, the energy tank spent for the rest of the day. It sucks because like I said, you know, social media kind of favors, you know, those kind of shredded physiques. And it's hard enough as it is, you know, competing with those physiques uh, especially doing it naturally. I mean, a lot of those physiques, you know, are are enhanced. So that's, you know, that's one disadvantage. You know, not naturally being a th like a shredded guy is another disadvantage. But I, I like took a step back and realized what the hell I was doing. I was literally, you know, playing into that, that whole thing where like, oh, you gotta be shredded if you wanna do social media. Meanwhile, I grew my freaking social media, my fitness social media, um, not physique based. Like it wasn't centered around my physique. It was centered around, you know, like just, I guess my personality and like what I bring to the table and, and kind of like how I make things fun. That's what I built my platform on. And so as I've gotten deeper in the industry, I kind of bought into that, you know, other narrative. Like I have to look a certain way. It honestly chalk it up. It was getting too much. Um, it was ruining my quality of life and, you know, me starting that 180 series was kind of me just, you know, kind of trying to push that boundary and trying to get myself to get motivated about it. Um, even though I was pretty much at that point spent on the diet, to be honest with you. And I've just done a lot of reflecting the last couple of weeks since I filmed that video and I am done straight up done shaping my physique for the sole purpose of social media. Cause if I freaking keep doing that, number one, I'll never be happy. Number two, I'll never freaking grow. Uh, because you gotta, you gotta eat to grow, man. You gotta eat to grow and you gotta be, you know, a little bit thicker to grow. You can't, you're not going to grow if you're under 10% body fat and you're going to also feel like shit. And the only thing that makes you feel good when you're that lean doing social media is like the likes and stuff, but it's fucking not worth it. My quality of life the last, you know, two months has been ass, has been terrible, and I'm done with it. I'm done fucking trying to live up to the unrealistic expectations of social media. You know, you got Lightroom, you got the gear, you got people's angles, you got people Photoshopping. Um, I'm just gonna do what I do and not give a fuck and fucking, you know, get massive on this bulk. This is the bulk series, episode one. And then once this series is done, we're gonna transition into a prep series and we're gonna fucking go on stage and try to win that Natty Pro card. So that is my goal right now. I'm super grateful if you're here, if you're supporting me, truly means the world. 
Um, I just want to show that, like, yeah, you don't have to fucking kill yourself to be single-digit body fat to be successful in this industry because that's literally unsustainable and it's going to be a detriment to your health, your relationships, everything, your workflow, and it's just not worth it. So welcome to the bulk series. Let's get freaking massive. And today I'm about to go for a walk right now. I outside still doing cardio on the bulk. Then I'm going to go to the grocery store and we're going to do a little grocery haul. Show you guys everything I'm going to be eating throughout this entire bulk. And yeah, should be fun. Hopefully you learn something. And hopefully you get inspired along the way on this series. So super excited for this series. Pretty much did a 180 from that last YouTube video. But um, this is the right call. Me and my coach made the decision. This is the right call for my quality of life, <laughs> my fucking workflow, um, my, um, you know, my growth. And uh, yeah, this is the, uh, my hormones, yeah, my, and my hormones because hormones are in the shitter. Yeah, didn't wanna mention that, but hormones are in the shitter. Yeah, let's get freaking huge. Also, apologize if I went in circles there. Literally treating this camera like a therapy session, and I know you guys are behind it uh, rooting for me, so sorry if I was talking in circles there, but it, that's a really important message I wanna hammer about like not buying into the social media rabbit hole of like, you gotta be shredded, you know, to be successful, bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Still gotta work hard though, don't get me wrong. One more thing, or a couple more things for this bulk, what we're going to be doing. Number one, obviously, bulking. Number two, getting freaking massive. Number three, growing out my freaking beard. I'm talking, we're gonna have my beard on steroids too. My beard's gonna be bulking. My beard is going to be bulking, <laughs> along with the physique. And uh, we're gonna look like a fucking Viking. And uh, yeah. We are going to embody the bulk. We are going to embrace the thickness. Now, I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'll see you when I get back. All right, just pulled up to the local lake. This is where I like to do my cardio. It's like this little lake where everyone kind of parks. And it's like two miles around the entire lake. Um, this is where I do my cardio pretty much every morning. Pop it in like an audio book. Uh, usually it's like David Goggins right now. It's, I'm on like chapter eight of, the first, of his first book. But uh, you might be wondering, Joe, why are you doing cardio on the bulk? The, the goal is to be in a calorie surplus. The goal is to, you know, conserve calories and have them, you know, be shuttled to your muscles. I know that, but the reason why I'm doing cardio on the bulk is for a few reasons. Number one, mental. Uh, for me, it's a great way to start my day. It puts me in a positive mood, especially when I'm listening to that audiobook. And it just feels good to get that sunlight on me. And it's just a great way to start my day. Number two, it keeps me hungry. I notice if I'm not doing cardio and if I'm kind of sitting around a little too long, like I don't even think about food, but when I do cardio every day, my ghrelin levels are always in check and I always want to eat. Like I always want to eat and I'm always hungry. So as the calories go up, you know, as we adjust the calories and stuff and I'm going to be eating more and more, uh, I might even be doing more cardio just to keep, you know, that hunger up just so I can get that food in. And number three, it ties directly into my lifting performance, keeps my endurance up and having a good cardiovascular system along with strength training is a great way to maximize your gains because you don't want to be the guy that once he goes over 10 reps, he's just windy as hell, breathing heavy, you know, on the bulk. And then you just, it just ruins your whole workout when you're just kind of spent like that and you're just tired. It just, if you can't get through a hard workout without like, you know, feeling like you're, you know, dying, that's a problem. So those are the three reasons why I'm doing cardio on the bulk and why I think you should too. Cause we don't want to be a total fat fuck and do nothing all day, but eat and lift. Got to move your body. It's going to help your training. Trust me. Oh yeah. There she is, baby. Whole foods market getting ready to take literally all my money, but just pulled up to whole foods and yeah, I'm not going to lie. It is not going to be a budget friendly grocery haul today. However, you get what you pay for. In my opinion, Whole Foods has the best quality, you know, groceries, meat, you name it. They got the best quality, um, but it, yeah, it does break the bank. I will be honest with you. But as the name says, Whole Foods, that's what we're going to be prioritizing on this bulk. We're not trying to eat any processed garbage. 90% of my diet is going to come from Whole Foods, meats, fruits, vegetables, rice, potatoes, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm at Whole Foods. But my wallet is gonna have a hole 
burned straight through it. Yeah, I would go to like somewhere else, but Whole Foods, it's right, it's, it's very close to my house. So they, uh, they get me, they got me with, uh, with the location and convenience. So I'm about to drop a bag, but it's all gonna be worth it because hopefully it all goes to my muscles. I'm investing in my physique. And after, uh, and after this grocery haul, Code Drive V -E is gonna be much more appreciated than usual, especially with all the steaks I'm about to get. I'm, I've been craving red meat the entire cut, and I just feel like liver king. I want red meat, I just want so much steak. I've been eating a lot of red meat since the bulk started, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. All right, so the first bulking haul is successfully done. However, I will not be going back to Whole Foods next time. Did not think it was going to be that bad. Oh, let me start the car before I freaking die of heat in here. Um, but yeah, I did not think it was going to be that bad. Total came out to $244. Uh, not gonna lie, I did go ham though. I was hungry going in there. So never food shop while you're hungry because you're gonna end up getting way more than you need. So I'm gonna unbox that as soon as I get home, but I gotta show you guys something. I ran into one of, one of you guys in there one of my supporters and he recognized me and he had this on hand. He drew it in school, freshman in high school. Pretty sick. It says it's supposed to be me. It's supposed to be me. It says down the hatch, got the young LA shorts on, dead lifting. Uh, not gonna lie, he actually did make me way more jacked than I am. Um, I wish I could look like that. Maybe by the end of the bulk and after the next cut, we'll look something like this, but I appreciate the love and support guys for real. Cause some days, you know, when I'm like down or like, you know, views are down or whatever, I just forget to take things into perspective. And then, then I see you guys in public, you just freaking brighten up my day and remind me like that I actually am doing a pretty good job doing what I'm doing. So that means the absolute world and it just keeps me going for real. So gonna put this in the iron chicken. So cool, much love guys. Honestly crazy though too, cause I remember I remember the kid that gave me this, he DM'd me like a picture of this and I had no idea he was from my hometown. And I'm like, no way. I'm like, wait, that's you? That's, a, that's crazy. But honestly, fucking amazing. Fucking love this shit, man. So cool. But let's go unbox these groceries, baby. Alrighty, and now it's time for the grocery haul. I promise we only got two big bags and I promise I only brought them in on one trip. But let's see what's inside. Actually, you know what? I should put these on the ground and put the food on top of the counter. That would probably be a lot smarter. We'll put one on here and then put the food and then, yeah, we'll do it like that. My bad, I'm a little bit slow. All right, first up, oatmeal. Great carb source. Got some vegetables, we got tomatoes, fruits, oranges, baby. Vitamin C, more carbs. Got these protein chips that I'm probably gonna try out. I don't know, I saw them in Whole Foods. Like I said, went in there hungry, shouldn't have, and got some stuff that I typically wouldn't get. But we're gonna try them. We got some calories to work with. Protein chips, rice cakes, can't go wrong for carbs. Almond milk, my favorite cereal of all time. Three Wishes, vanilla frosted, absolutely fire. So good, literally my favorite cereal of all time. Beats, beats any of the high sugar cereals, in my opinion. This is healthy for you. It's got fucking, I think eight, eight grams of protein per serving. 130 calories per serving, absolutely fire. Protein waffle pancake mix, like I said, went in there hungry. Got these big ass burrito wraps, only 190 calories per tortilla. This thing is bigger than my head, so we're gonna make some ground beef wraps probably with that. Got some Greek yogurt, Chobani Greek yogurt, can't go wrong. We got some mixed vegetable packs, slip these in the microwave. I'm too lazy to steam vegetables myself. Then we got some uncured chicken hot dogs. I don't know, I saw these, wanted to try them. The macros are insane. 70 calories per hot dog, seven grams of protein. Can't beat it. Pretty decent fat source too, so gonna give these a try. I don't know, I feel like now that I'm on the bulk, it's just like I have these calories to work with and I wanna like, you know, broaden my palate a little bit. I wanna see what I like, cause I've been eating the same shit for months and it's only been like two meals a day. We're gonna broaden the horizons a little bit. We got the Dave's Killer Bread, probably my favorite bread of all time. This is the whole grains and seeds uh, version. They have a white bread version. And they have a couple other versions, but I like this one. We got these brioche buns. Typically wouldn't buy these, saw them, um, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a, a burger, like a bulking burger for TikTok. I'm gonna make that soon. I'm gonna create like a lot of uh, food cooking videos on my TikTok now. So now that I have like the calories to work with, so I'm gonna 
bring Chef Joe back and make some amazing stuff. But got these, the brioche ones. They look aesthetic too for like the camera. It looks like somebody licked them. So gonna make some macro friendly burgers with this guy. Sourdough bread, just, just cause I fucking love bread. My, probably my favorite carb source. I can't stand rice, so I love bread. Then we got the meats, baby. Two strip loin steaks. Fucking gotta channel my inner liver king. Honestly, I might eat it raw. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> then we got some applewood smoked bacon for the breakfast, for breakfast in the morning with my eggs. Keeping the fats high, this bulk. Uh, gotta regulate those hormones, especially after a hard cut. Got some ground turkey, 94% lean. I think it's like, yeah, it's 140 calories per serving. Then we went ahead and got the bougie eggs, the pasture raised eggs. They were pretty expensive. This fucking thing was, $11, but I, I honestly do notice a taste. I do, I do notice a taste difference. It's a little bit of a difference. It's not, not worth it. Like I said, probably not gonna go back to Whole Foods next grocery haul if I kept going, you know, th throughout the entire bulk, I would be literally broke. But it's just such good food. Can't beat it. Then we got some organic, I didn't even know I got the organic one, but organic ground beef, 93.7, more meat. Boy loves his red meat. Uh, didn't get chicken because I have chicken ready. It's just frozen uh, because fun fact, my parents and my family owns a chicken distribution company. We sell like Popeyes around like New Jersey and you know, like this whole area in New York and Pennsylvania. So yeah, I don't need to buy chicken like ever, but I, need, I do need to tell my dad to bring me home like fresh chicken. This has been frozen for a while. But uh, yeah, so a little fun fact there. I don't know if you guys knew that. Almond butter, baby carrots, more vegetables. Love me some carrots. Steak seasoning for the steak. Never had this one. Kinder's the steak blend seasoning. I'll let you guys know how that is. Got some bloobs, can't go wrong for the oatmeal and probably putting those pancakes. Avocados for some avocado toast with some whole eggs on top. Gonna also make that a recipe on TikTok as well with probably like this, um, this Dave's Killer Bread or the sourdough bread. And then last but not least, for convenience, you always want to have calories on deck on the bulk. Whenever you're going out places, wherever, you know, more, more than likely you're gonna, you know, it's gonna be time for a meal and you're gonna be somewhere else. So to supplement that, protein bars, anything you could bring on the go. Um, protein bars, what else? There's protein cookies, you know. You know, I would stay away from those, but you know, I usually try to not eat anything processed, but if I need to for convenience, this is the go-to, protein bars. Yeah, that is the whole grocery haul. This, all of it, fucking $245. Absolutely got railed, absolutely got bent over, but hopefully it contributes to a well, you know, bulked physique, and hopefully it adds some size onto these freaking 16 and a half inch arms. So the goal is 18 inch arms by the end of this. We'll see, hopefully just all this gets shuttled right in there. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go do some work. I'm gonna go edit some TikToks and I'll see you in the gym, baby. And another quick message to the kid who drew me this. I wanna say thank you. Thank you for making my day. Truly means the world, all the support. Uh, however, you did make me feel a little bit old. I asked you, I said, you know, how old are you guys? Are you guys in high school? Like, did you guys go to my high school over there? And they said, yeah, they're freshmen. And I'm like, oh wow, it's crazy. I graduated in 2018. And they're like, yeah, we graduated in 2027. Bro, when I tell you I felt like a freaking dinosaur, I felt like a freaking dinosaur. That is crazy. That just makes me feel old as hell. But yeah, turns out I'm a full ass grown ass man now, despite being 18 in my mind sometimes, crazy. But check this out once again, absolutely sick. Love you guys. <laughs> Alrighty, back in the Iron Chicken after pretty much almost a full day of eating my bulking calories. So I'm feeling full, I feel an arm pump brewing. And to get that, we were, whip, we were whipping out the new Stim Daddy Pre and the new Pump Daddy version two. Both of them just came out today. This basically is a high Stim Pre, just like Godzilla. And then the Pump Daddy is just no caffeine, just straight up pump products, L-citrulline, all that good stuff. And we're gonna concoct the two. Both are the same flavor. What's the exact name of the flavor? The Candy Watermelon flavor. Absolutely fire. This has been my daily driver lately. Two scoops of the Stim Daddy. 
I believe two scoops is, yeah, two scoops is 400 milligrams of caffeine. Um, I would recommend doing one first, see where your tolerance is at. But you already know my tolerance is through the roof. So we're doing two. It's gonna be a lot of powder because it's two and two the serving sizes. She's gonna be thick. Oh fuck! I spilled some. Oh man, it's a shame. I spilled more. <laughs> oh, it must have been upside down in the. Yeah. Drinking. It's like a waste of five dollars. Yeah, really. This is. I'm making a mess. This is not good. Oh my god! I didn't realize it's all over. <laughs> it's all over. Fuck it. Oh right, yeah, doing two scoops of this. This is getting bad. Smell the watermelon? It's like really strong. Two scoops of that just should, should equate to a massive arm pump. My arms are a huge weak point of mine. So it's gonna be one of the things I'm gonna be hammering the most on the bulk uh, is my arms, the lat width, and the quads are the weak points. And uh, I think my arms are only like 16 inches, 16 and a half inches. For someone my height and weight, that's not good, especially if you want to win a natty show. You gotta get those bad boys up to at least 17, 18 without a pump. So we gotta hammer them hard today. It's the first time I'm doing two scoops of both, so down the hatch, let you know how it tastes. It's actually very good. Thought it was gonna be too sweet. It's actually very good, hold on. Very good, a little bit chunky though, but I'll see you on the first set. For this workout, pretty much we're gonna, we're gonna have fun with it, honestly. We're still on the same split from the cut. Uh, my coach, Brandon Clark, he's literally, you know, making my new program as we speak. So we're just gonna have fun with it, kind of free ball it, get a pump. You know, stay structured with it. So first exercise, we're gonna go with the seated dumbbell press. This is literally the, my worst exercise ever. I am very weak on it. It just doesn't make any sense because you know the, the amount of weight I lift on the Smith machine doesn't like equate to the, the combined weight, the dumbbells that I lift. It's just something about the dumbbells I can't, I don't know. Maybe it's my long arms. I got a long wingspan. So we're gonna probably spam this movement during the whole bulk. So. Might as well start early, so. There we go. Okay, first working set. It's always a struggle to grab the 60s from the bottom of that rack. I think I just threw my back out. Dude, these feel so heavy. I'll tell you right now, the dumbbells that are hexa like hexagons, they're way heavier than the normal dumbbells, mm -hmm. for sure. No doubt. These feel like 90s, and I'm not dyslexic either. They do say 60. cameraman be, be careful when I'm doing dumbbell shoulder press my last cameraman is big toe snap <laughs> not scary okay. but we're channeling the bulk we're going to be rocking flannels pretty much every day waiting for young LA to drop a flannel bro they used to back in the day when like they weren't as big they had some sick flannels they haven't dropped them since but Waiting for them to drop some flannels. Try to look like Kratos on the bulk, so that's what we're trying to do. You know, leave the, the compressions on, leave the tanks on. Not gonna be seen the midsection for a while. That's, that's, how, that's the way the cookie crumbles. There was a time and a place, not now, we gotta grow. Not letting social media, the pressures of looking lean on social media dictate, you know, my growth. So that's what we're doing. Crazy what food can do. Literally, the last time we filmed, did the same workout. I don't think I did dumbbell though, but the, the last shoulder and arm day before that, I did dumbbell press and I was doing 50s for the same rep range. Add some calories, put on a couple pounds, 
Now we're doing 60s for 10 and not 50s. Already making progress on the bulk. Crazy what food can do. But one more set of those. I'm smoking these. I might go up. Fuck yeah. Good. How's that? <laughs> All right, just logging my weights here. See, I have an app. I don't know if you can see, I have a privacy screen. But just logging my weights. Um, th this is a great tool, especially when you're bulking, to just try to come in and beat those numbers. Uh, I just did those three sets with 60 pound dumbbells for 10 reps, just logged them. So now I know the next time I hit this workout next week, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna try to beat them. Maybe I'll go, maybe I'll go 65s, but I won't up the weight until I hit the top end of the rep range with you know the 60s or wh whatever weight I was using. So if I'm doing eight to 10 reps, once I hit all three sets for 10 reps, that's when we go up to the 65s and then do the same thing, you know, and do the same thing. That's how you progressive overload, get bigger, get stronger. And yeah, it's literally, that's how easy training is. People on TikTok and all these other platforms make it a lot more difficult, but that's literally how, how easy it is. Just come to the gym, try to get better, train harder every time you come in, and that's literally it. That's how you make the gains. I love getting stronger. <laughs> Just hit 10 on the last set. Next shoulder day, remind me, 65s. Gotta go up and wait, we just smoked that set. Feeling good. Got some fucking sweet potatoes in the system. Ooh, All carved that's up. the best. Nothing like it. A lot of people make the mistake, and I get clowned on this uh, by my boys a lot, but you'll never see me curl on more than like 30 pounds, and that's even pushing it. Um, especially because I'm not that strong right now, but you really don't need to curl that much weight. Right now, I'm working, my working weight is with the 20s. Shoot for 15 reps, but I'm really trying to control it and feel inside that muscle, and that's how you grow. You're not gonna grow by just fucking ego lifting, you know, 40, 50 pound dumbbells, swinging your elbow up, you're just taking the tension off the muscle for the sake of, you know, looking cool and looking strong. If that's what you wanna do, sure, but if you wanna grow, fucking, it's all about the finesse, baby. Slow and controlled, just feel that muscle. And that's how you're gonna get a better pump anyway. You're not gonna get a good pump by fucking, you know, ego lifting. Save the ego lifting for the end of the set. Then you could just milk out a little extra growth. But if you're fucking curling 50 pound dumbbells, uh, don't talk to me unless you're like, straight up, you know, Sam Solo, who's like actually doing it with strict form and can handle it. I'm not saying to go light, if you can handle heavy weight, go handle it. But if you can't handle it, don't do it. So like I said, the weak point on my physique is like my biceps, my lat width. So what I'm, what, so what I told my coach to do is, is to make me a split that just you know exposes all my weak points. So I'm probably going to hit biceps, you know, like four days a week, you know, just to maximize the, that growth and just to have all those extra calories, you know, go to my weak points, especially if I'm going to be breaking them down more often. So. A lot of people don't take into account that like not every split is like a one size fits all. Like I'm probably gonna hit, be hitting quads, you know, twice, maybe even three times a week, because that's another one of my weak points. So you wanna tailor your split based off of you. Be honest with yourself, look in the mirror. What do I need to work on? Work on that more, literally that simple. So keep that in mind, if you don't have a coach, then you gotta kind of self assess and be honest with yourself. According to my coach, my biceps suck. So we're gonna work on it. 90% of your life will suck. 10% will be fucking happy. You may be lucky guy and have a lot of fucking money, have a great ass woman, all this shit. Trust me, one-on-one -on -one with that fucking guy, he's missing something. His life still sucks because he hasn't 
face something that bothered him his whole fucking life. Something is still eating that motherfucker up. Almost everybody. Everybody. Eating. Little tip for this movement. Just like any other, you know, tricep movement that's overhead, like a skull crusher, you don't want to fully, you don't want to fully, you know, walk out. That kind of just takes the whole tension off the tricep. You want to kind of like go right before the lockout. So like right there, and just keep that constant tension on. So to keep that tension on the tricep the entire time, rather than if you just go like this, lock fully out, tension's gone. And honestly, you could fuck your shoulder up like that if that weight's heavy enough. So, little tip there, probably the only exercise I don't lock out on is anything overhead and tricep. Forgot to mention, current weight, we're already up freaking a decent amount of weight. Current weight is 197. Around, one, around 195 to 197. It's week, it's day four of the bulk. So I gotta text coach, I don't know what the hell the goal weight is gonna be, but don't be surprised if like eight, 10 months from now, your boy's like 225 and has a big ass, you know, Viking beard. The goal is 18 inch arms too. I'm gonna measure them like after this video and I'll report back in the next video. I'm pretty sure they're like 16. So I'm gonna keep my measurements all around so I can update them, update them after the bulk is done. And it'll make me feel better too about gaining some body fat. Come on. Kill this fucker. All right, little hammer curl tip to absolutely destroy your biceps, but unfortunately also destroy your ego because it's gonna make the movement a lot harder and you're probably gonna have to grab less weight so what the normal person does, they grab the dumbbell in the middle of the dumbbell. That's all you're gonna wanna do. You're gonna wanna grab the dumbbell all at the end. So what gravity's gonna do is just uh, pull the dumbbell down because you're also gonna wanna tilt the dumbbell up while you do your hammer curls. And it's just gonna feel a lot harder because that, because that weight is just bringing, it, bringing the dumbbell back down. And it's just gonna make the movement a lot harder and blow up your biceps that much more. So. Ask the question, yo Joe, how do I know how far to take the bulk? When should I stop the bulk? What weight should I shoot for? Um, I say, don't even think about the weight. What I would recommend is bulk until your abs are just barely hanging on by a thread. As long as you can still see your abs, you're good. You don't want to lose them completely, but to the point, bulk it to the point where your abs are just hanging on by a thread. And that's when you probably should, you know, dial things back and start thinking about making a cut. Because you don't want to lose your abs completely. So try to put on as much size as you can while maintaining your abs. That's what I recommend. Boys and girls, it is the next day, and uh, that's gonna be a wrap on day one of the bulk. Um, so yesterday, sick workout, sick shoulder and arm day, but uh, I did a lot of thinking overnight, um, or last night, and I thought about it this morning as well. Um, I think the goal weight for this bulk is gonna be 220, 220 pounds. Uh, we're already approaching 200 pounds, around 197, 
around like 196 to like 198 fluctuating um, in the last like week or two. I've only been on, you know, the, the uh, bulking calories for uh, two weeks or no, a week and a half. And uh, yeah, I already gained some weight. So I think the goal weight's gonna be fucking 220. Like I said, plan to bulk for give or take eight to 10 months. So it's gonna be a hefty bulk. And um, yeah, and fun fact, this is actually my first ever like structured, you know, laid out, thought out bulk ever. Um, I've been just kind of lifting low key, like slowly gaining weight. I've never tried to actually push food um, and get uncomfortable on the bulk to put on mass. So uh, yeah, I mean, one time in senior year in high school, I was just lifting and eating whatever I want. I don't know if you would count that, but wasn't really a grown man or no, or like knew how to train. So uh, this is gonna be my first ever structured bulk. So I never, yeah, I've never actively tried to put on like a massive amount of size. So I'm freaking excited for this. Way more than the cut, because I knew what to expect for the cut. I've been shredded before. Um, this is new territory. I know it's going to be uncomfortable, um, you know, to get that size, you know, short term, you know, sacrifices for long term gains. That's the goal. Shooting for the Natty Pro card uh, summer of 2024. And I truly believe we can get it. I really do. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to have to see how much mass we put on. So hope you enjoyed episode one. Uh, that's going to be it for today. I will see you in the next one. And these are going to be consistent, baby. Fucking bulking to 220. Uh, going to be filming three videos a week. Uh, probably going to be able to get two of them out a week. Um, possibly three, depending on me and my editor's workflow. But yeah, super excited uh, to have you along in the series. And honestly, my shoulder is, is getting tired from holding this camera. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, baby.